When the history books are written and they say Kellyanne was the first woman in history to successfully manage a U.S. presidential campaign, I want the sentence to say comma and it's Donald Trump who put her there because I was hiding in plain sight for decades and never got that chance. But he confides and consults in the women and has made sure that we're always on equal footing with the men. A lot of men here in this complex, in this White House, most of them gone, by the way, uh, well, you have tried to stop me. Yes, you have survived everyone. I've tried to stop me. When I worked for President Obama and there was changes in the world, like the Obamacare website didn't work or we had problems with Congress, his approval rating would go up and down. He would lose Democrats even sometimes. But there is something about the appeal of President Trump with his supporters. They are, they are bought in. They, there's something that they feel really deeply about what they get out of his presidency. Most people in this country see themselves as an outsider to the system. And that is still who Donald J. Trump is. He's still an outsider to the system. And you would say, well, he's the president. But because Joe Biden's the nominee, because the Democrats really screwed up their nomination process this time and did not go for somebody who would suggest forward-looking, visionary, new generation change, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, it allows President Trump to remain and to run for re-election as the incumbent outsider. Joe Biden does seem to be the most awkward the hardest one for you all to pin some notion that he's part of the radical left because he's been around for 47 years, because we know his story so Yeah, well. his story isn't radical left. His story he is also of American, is, he also uh, is, is of grief class. and loss and a man who's done right by his family. God bless him. And we should, pretty, all, we should all applaud that. It's a pretty good part of the There's American There's no reason story. he should be doing the Bernie Manifesto and listening to AOC on Green New Deal. So 16, you know, what happened, what happened happened, we both know. Um, 18, a lot of women left the Republicans, voted for Democrats in the midterm. Without Joe Biden's help, nobody even asked um, him to campaign for them hardly, did they? But not Joe Biden is still doing He's better. He's trying to fit Joe into Biden. a party that left him a long time ago. <laughs> Joe Biden is still doing better. I mean, the, the gender gap, is monstrous. And you all have been running ads, trying to frighten women into supporting Trump. I want to just say about the gender gap, there's no such thing as women's issues. It's so offensive to hear the phrase women's issues. In 30 years of doing this, as you have, yeah. I have never a single time in my career, Jennifer, heard the phrase men's issues. Of course, I agree. Everybody there believes no men can think of everything, but right. women, but you're not, we but can only think of a couple things. But still not, right, I agree. There's no such thing as a woman's issue, but Still, Biden is doing better. Biden's still doing better with women. If women look at the progress report, they're going to know that this is a president who kept so many promises. Jennifer, you and I know, the he ladies know, that we love men who keep their promises. And that's very important to us, keep their word and keep their promises. But he's done in 47 months what Joe Biden didn't do in 47 years. That is the easiest way to contrast. You personally really believe in Donald Trump, right? You I very much believe in America, and I think America needs a leader for a time such as this. This is what I think Democrats see, okay? So they're like, all right, we have, the U.S. is leaving the world in death due to COVID. We're in the middle of the greatest economic downturn since the Great Depression. For some reason, cynically, the Democrats believe they can win an election based on a once in a century tragedy that swept across this nation. Isn't it so sad that they see political opportunism in a pandemic? We don't. I we see a dual see, medical and, and financial crisis. I which think is why Biden would say he sees long. a vacuum of leadership that he could step into. I think it all turned around five or six weeks ago. President Trump okay. said to the country and tweeted out, I'm wearing a mask, I want you to wear a mask. And when he tweeted out, he said, you're going to get 200,000 likes by tomorrow on that tweet. And he's gotten well, far more advice. than that last time. Right? Because people love your tweets that talk about policy and give us directional advice. He also resumed the coronavirus briefings. I said to him mm -hmm. that briefings should be succinct and they should be technical briefings. And the other thing he did that week was basically say, I'm pulling down my live convention oh. and I'm not going to do these big rallies. And that's the president saying what's good for thee is good for me. So that's called leadership. The sure. Democrats thought they had this all sewed up two months ago. The media were like, I'm going to Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard and the Hamptons, we're all sitting down like, holy crap, this guy's coming back. So you have this racial unrest, you know, playing out at the same time as your convention. The George Floyd video, the president said it was disgraceful. President Trump said it was disgraceful. And I called it murder. Um, has he, do you know if he's seen the video of Jacob Blake? I don't know shot, if he's you know? seen that video, and I know that we don't know all the facts. I yeah. hear that it's under investigation, but what we have seen night after night 
Are people taking to Kenosha the way that they've been in Minneapolis and Portland and Seattle and so many places, Jennifer, mm -hmm. looting, vandalizing, two people lost their lives overnight? I know. I mean, they're walking around with huge firearms. We're gonna have this play out throughout the fall. Is that unrest something that you welcome in your campaign? Is it welcome is it unrest? Of that, course not. Is it something that concerns you? How do you? Of think course, that's it concerns play me. Out? Of course, we don't want our country divided, and we don't want to see it night after night, where these beautiful cities and suburbs are being destroyed by people who aren't peacefully protesting. Many the protesters support were, this public Jennifer. Do you think peaceful protesters? killed two people in Kenosha overnight with firearms? No, it's Were they really peaceful? Concerning. Or is that murder? So, do you have any hope that this country can come together? Do you have any hope that, I mean, President yes. Trump, he did not try to win by um, capturing a medal. He did not try to win by bringing people to his side. Um, That's just not that, true. People, people voted for him who had never voted Democrat. It's still true that a vast majority of his support is white working Americans. Is and what? It's, it's white working Americans. It's not, you know, a lot of the working class are, are people of color. But why uh, are you denouncing them? So why, why don't they matter? I'm not, I'm not say, well, but why don't I they don't matter? They matter. matter? I do think they do. But you can't sit there and say to me, somebody who grew up the same era as you did, became of Asian Reagan, I come from a military family. God bless and thank you them know, for yeah, me. Three generations still doing it. And I don't have respect for the working, for the white working No, I didn't class, say that. I don't know why there's there. always this snide remark, not, not from you, but yeah. from many people. There's always sort of the raised eyebrow, the furl, furled About lip. Trump supporters, yes. yes. I always feel a fire in my belly and bile in my throat yeah. when people who are the way I grew up are mocked and ridiculed as either irredeemable or deplorable or looked down upon because they go to church or they own a firearm. But I gotta tell gotcha. you, as the person who gotcha. coined the term hidden undercover Trump voter in 2016, there are even more of them and they're even more committed now. And they're going to surprise you as to who they are this time because you see the poll, 62% of Republicans or Trump supporters are afraid to even express themselves, mm -hmm. but they express themselves in the ballot box. A week after the conventions, the president will be way ahead.